Each of the Expedition 24 crew members who will be on orbit to mark the first 10 years of continuous human presence on the International Space Station already has a connection to spaceflight history in their own backgrounds. Colonel Doug Wheelock, United States Army, was born in Binghamton, New York, exactly one year before Alan Shepard's Mercury flight and grew up in the nearby town of Windsor. I was nine years old uh, when we first landed Apollo 11 on the moon. And um, I thought, wow, that, that is really awesome. And, um, but I never thought that that, was, that dream was like way too big for me because I, I was just like an ordinary kid in a tiny little town. Growing up in that tiny town, population less than a thousand even today, Wheelock developed an appreciation for hard work, for service to others, and a love of flying, all of which led him to the United States Military Academy at West Point, where he earned a Bachelor of Science in Applied Science and Engineering. I knew that West Point was, was the, top, the top of the list of leadership schools, and I really wanted to, I really wanted to, to experience what it's like to be trained as a leader. It gave me the opportunity to come out and really um, start right into aviation. Once he was commissioned and spent a year in the infantry, after graduating at the top of his flight school class, Wheelock had postings as an Army aviator in the Pacific and an assignment as an advanced weapons research and development engineer before earning a Master of Science in Aerospace Engineering from Georgia Tech and then moving on to the Navy Test Pilot School. When I was able to go through test pilot training and, and get exposed to and meet uh, uh, different uh, test pilots from various services and I got to meet some of the astronauts that had formerly been test pilots and, and I thought, you know, that's something that I could do as well. You know, I think I might try to do that. He was selected as an astronaut in 1998 and worked in many areas of the International Space Station program, including a stint in Star City as NASA's Director of Operations, Russia. Wheelock made three spacewalks on his first flight, the 2007 shuttle mission that delivered the Harmony module and repaired damaged solar arrays on the International Space Station's P-6 truss. Fyodor Yurchikin was born in the Georgian city of Batumi one day before the first spaceship that ever escaped Earth's gravity flew past the moon. He was two years old when Yuri Gagarin's spaceflight changed the world, and on his very first day in school, he had a ready answer when the teacher asked the children what they wanted to be. Like everybody of in, in my class asked, I wanted to be hole in Soviet Command. He told me, it's goalkeeper, it's not profession. I ask you about profession. Ah, about profession, I wanted to be a cosmonaut, <laughs> like everybody. He really did. And he started by choosing to attend a local school named for the designer of the early Soviet space vehicles. By the time he finished high school, Yurchikin had decided to study engineering rather than become a pilot, reasoning that a pilot who developed health problems would be out of the space program altogether, but an engineer wouldn't. As for which college to attend... When I check the data for all civilian cosmonauts, most of civilian cosmonauts graduated Moscow Aviation Institute. Of course, more chance to go to cosmonauts if I graduated Moscow Aviation Institute. He graduated the Moscow Aviation Institute as a mechanical engineer specializing in aerospace vehicles and immediately started work at the Rocket Space Corporation Energia first as a flight controller, and then as an engineer, eventually becoming lead engineer for the Mir shuttle program. In 1997, he was selected for Energia's cosmonaut corps, and while training for spaceflight, he also finished a Ph.D. in economics at Moscow Service State University. Yurchikin spent 11 days in space on the 2002 shuttle mission that delivered the S-1 truss to the International Space Station, and he returned in 2007 as commander of Expedition 15, completing three spacewalks during that six-month mission and pursuing his interest in studying Earth from orbit. It's ecological program, geophysical program. It's understood uh, the, uh, all problems, for example, about rainforest, fire, a big city and how the big city killed the nature. You may see about this from space station. 
it's a task too. Shannon Walker is the first native of Houston to fly in space. She was born one day after Ed White became the first American to walk in space during the first space flight ever run by Mission Control in Houston. Growing up in the town that came to be known as Space City had an impact on her. I was quite young when we first walked on the moon. I was I had just turned four, but we did watch it on TV, and I think that just set the seed right then that that would be a really interesting thing to do. And then growing up in Houston and always having uh, the astronauts in the Johnson Space Center in my backyard. I was always aware of uh, the space program, and so I just uh, decided to pursue it. Walker stayed in Houston for college, earning a Bachelor of Arts in Physics from Rice University, and got her first job out of school as a robotics flight controller at the Johnson Space Center. She took a leave of absence to get her master's and doctorate in space physics at Rice, and then had to make a decision. Do I want to be part of the human spaceflight program or do I want to be part of the unmanned spaceflight program? And I decided I really enjoy the human spaceflight program, so I was able to come back to the Johnson Space Center and continue my work as a flight controller. She joined the International Space Station program in 1995 to work on robotics integration and moved to the engineering side three years later to manage teams coordinating on-orbit problem resolution. She spent a year in Moscow working with the Russian Space Agency and its contractors on avionics integration and returned to Houston to become the technical lead for the station's mission evaluation room. Walker was selected for the astronaut corps in 2004 to help prepare humans to someday live off of planet Earth. How do you have a life support system that can work for long periods of time and provide you with the water and the atmosphere that you need? Um, how do you grow plants in space? Obviously, we can't keep calling back to uh, Earth for the next pizza delivery, so we've got to figure out how to be self-sufficient off the planet, and that is what the station is, is giving us, that knowledge.